if those entities, spirits were there in the room with you and they had the power and the flesh and blood to hurt you, they wouldn't just hurt you, they'd probably kill you. Someone is stabbing me in the back. <laughs> Three times I felt something in my back like a pin. There is somebody here, can you walk down the hallway? <gasps> if there's someone around that can show themselves to me, I'd love to see you. There's some dangerous people down there. I'm a bit scared now, to be honest. If wolves could talk, the Aradale Lunatic Asylum would have a lot to say. Many claim it to be one of the most haunted places in Australia, which is not surprising when you consider how much pain, tragedy and death has touched the many buildings that make up the asylum's campus. It is a place where countless people have reported paranormal experiences, and even a place that has previously challenged me as a paranormal investigator, and somewhere I'd always been eager to revisit, ever since the first time I'd set foot on the property. I cannot believe I have made it back to Aradale Lunatic Asylum after three years. I've been trying to get back here for a long, long time, and it means the world to me to be back. It is getting really dark now. We're just waiting for the sun to go down. I'm pretty stoked about this one. This is a pretty big location. Last time I was here, I had some really crazy and like epic paranormal experiences and I'm hoping and crossing my fingers I get the same tonight. This was one of the first places, maybe actually the first place, where I heard a disembodied voice with my own ears and then later found that it was actually documented onto the audio of my camera as an EVP. These happened whilst I was with Jared. He did not hear these voices but I did in the moment. Terrifying. I know Amy uh, is really excited to investigate this place again because she got some really cool stuff. Strangely I didn't hear it though so yeah it'd be interesting to see if we get anything similar tonight. One area in particular that I remember quite well was this there's this corridor and our guide at the time was saying that he had a negative experience there and we walked through with an obelisk and actually got the word stab so I don't know I remember that being quite spooky. Another thing that makes me so excited was I had actually planned to film here as a Halloween special about two years ago and I made merch that featured the Aradale Lunatic Asylum in the merch design and I never got to film here because our borders closed because of COVID so it means the world to me to be back. Aradale was built in 1867. We had a huge population influx in Victoria during the gold, flood, gold rush. I mean, we went from a population of around 100 to almost a million. As the gold started to dry up, there were some social issues, of course. Consequently, there was seen a big need for these lunatic asylums. It was a pretty rigid society back then so it didn't take a lot to actually be deemed a lunatic so these places didn't take long to be bulging at the brim. We know according to the records that we had times where we had up to 1500 patients here at one, one point which we simply don't have the space for. They were pretty brutal. We're talking about a time prior to actual effective medications. Much of it sort of would fall back on restraint, seclusion and punishment. So we relied on isolation and that might have been isolation in a small cell, but it also could have been isolation in a small box that was something like a, a sarcophagus. Uh, we used a horrible therapy called bagging, but they would basically shackle the patient's wrists and ankles to their waist and put them inside this really stiff sack, which was sort of a bit like a canvas, and sew it up around their neck. And they would leave them in that situation for two, three, four, five days and basically stewing in their own juices. We also used some treatments like bloodletting. The idea behind that is, you know, that you go angry, you get red in the face, we let a bit of blood out. Oh, look, they're subdued. But of course, everyone's subdued when you let a bit of blood out. Uh, we went through a 14-year period where we were treating people with schizophrenia with LSD. Uh, we used hydrotherapy, water therapy, so ice baths, hot baths. Uh, we also used um, insulin therapy. Insulin therapy is pretty scary because we use that right up until relatively modern times. And of course, sometimes people just didn't wake up. So it was a rather fatal therapy. Uh, then of course, we used electroconvulsive therapy. Pretty terrifying because we didn't really consider the jewels that we were putting through a person's brain. It could go two ways. It could either just be outright fatal because it could bring on a heart attack. It could just completely wipe a person's mental capacity altogether and give them amnesia and all sorts of things. There's a lot of talk that lobotomy was actually centralized uh, into a Melbourne hospital. I'm not 
not convinced. We went from lobotomies where we would do the burr hole drills through the skull and pick away pieces of a person's brain, but of course that leaves a scar. But when you move to the Walter Freeman type lobotomy with your orbital clasp, your ice pick, that goes through the corner of the eye, breaks through the, a very soft part of the skull, and they would just move that up and down, move it back to neutral, remove it and repeat in the other eye, and just sort of sever through the the frontal lobe uh, doesn't leave a scar. It's a pretty fast procedure, but the results are, are diabolical. It was brain surgery with a chainsaw. Knowing the torment that has been experienced within the asylum allows one to comprehend why so many have had paranormal experiences within Aradale. These range from absolutely terrifying run-ins with dark entities to those which can truly affect and touch a person in emotional ways. Uh, shadow figures are pretty common and sometimes they're really startling because they look so solid, uh, particularly if they're close to you. Getting grasped softly or firmly is really, really common. Having your hair played with is really common. Uh, we do occasionally get people get scratches and bites unfortunately. Just that overall sensory kind of thing like where you'll smell something or you'll taste something. We get a lot of audible things happen here. You hear things where you absolutely know there's there's no explanation for it. The list is like that and I've stopped saying we've seen it all. We just don't say that anymore because I think I could work here for 10 years and still experience something new from time to time. Being as Aradau is so large and there was so much ground to cover as a paranormal investigator we were fortunate enough to share this space with our good friends from Adelaide's Haunted Horizons and Paranormal Quest, who I'll put links to below so you can check out their work. But I also wanted to add and thank Eerie Tours for allowing us the amazing opportunity to visit and investigate overnight. I honestly cannot recommend Eerie Tours and their team enough to anyone watching. But to make best use of time, we singled out some particularly active areas of the asylum that we wish to investigate. The first area we would visit was the matron's quarters. Uh, we've got a couple of matrons that we do communicate with here, kind of like our, our patron protectors. <laughs> we, so we have a lot of respect for our matrons and also our superintendents. But we also think that a couple of our matrons may have taken a lot of children under their wing and that they were a safe place for these, for these kids because we do come across a lot of children in that space. One little boy in particular by the name of James, uh, we have seen him on more than... Ooh, um, we have seen him on more than one occasion. He's about yay tall. He's got these really bulbous boots, so they're old school. And he wears like one of those kind of like, you know, those flat caps. He's dressed from the 1800s. He was here from the get-go, I believe. We do know that the first little girl that passed away here was a little girl by the name of Charlotte and she was only six and we do come across her occasionally in that space too. I knew that the matron's quarters could be quite active but right from the get-go the space felt off, our equipment started to malfunction and I was affected on an overwhelming level. Camera just reset for the second time, something's wrong, something's wrong. Right as we were setting up to film, one of my cameras shut off due to an error multiple times. This is our newest camera that has never caused us issues in the past and which miraculously began to work after we left this area and has continued to work ever since. But what was to follow this incident was something that affected me on a deep emotional level. So I have left the following clip raw to show the progression of this emotional outburst. Rolling. 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 Audio rolling. Is it? Yeah, it was yours? Yep. Okay, deep breath. Crypt Keepers, we are starting our walkthrough of Aradale Lunatic Asylum in the Matron's Quarters. And I visited here three years ago, had experiences here, so it's a place I really wanted to come back. I've already had a meltdown. <laughs> We just walked into this building. I feel very frazzled. I'm going to try and keep this together for you guys. I have had um, a camera just stop working like twice. It's had these weird errors and now it's just not working. 
I do have two cameras rolling now. It's my third camera and my like a brand new camera. That's just not working. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong, but <sighs> I don't know what's wrong with me. But um, we're in the matron's quarters and we're It took a good while for me to recompose myself after being hit with such a sudden wave of extreme sadness that's difficult to describe, though it did feel as though these emotions were not my own. Later in the night, we had the opportunity to interview Raven, who I asked if others had had experiences such as this one. The answer we received was some extremely eerie insight that once again affected me emotionally. It's a pretty regular occurrence. But there again, I mean, if you look at it, the people that lived here, in, particularly in some areas in this asylum, some of the th things that they would have experienced here would have elicited extreme emotional pain and suffering or fear or um, sadness. Some areas bring you to tears. Some areas bring you that horrible, fearful sensation and others just feel really light and comfortable and uplifting. I think Amy got the worst of that tonight. I got the sad. <laughs> oh, where did you get it? Like just as we started, like we went into the matrons. Yeah. My camera messed up like three times and I'm like, I don't know if it's broken or it's just like yeah. something's messed with it. Like as my brand new camera. And then I'm like crying and I'm like, Oh that, God, that'd that be the space like, for it though. Oh matron is, um, we've actually got three, we've got three matrons. I think they were very sad with the work they did here and we do know at least one of our matrons did suicide. Yeah, that hits me. Though. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> Come on, might cry again. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, you all right? With emotions running high, I had Jared take over to lead the beginning of our investigation's walkthrough. What's interesting, and could be relevant to the effects this area had on me, was our first response through Ghost Tube, which stated, I need to go. Unfortunately, this was not something we heard in the moment as the volume on our phone was muted. Though, as we'll discover later, there could have been a paranormal reason for this. We're in the matron's quarters. We've already set up an SLS camera in a room of interest with a new, we've got new gadgets. We're using new gadgets. We've got a, um, what is it called, Anne? Tripwire. We've got a tripwire set up in that room, which is where a spirit called James is said to be seen. So we've set it up, we've got SLS running. Anyway, I'm blabbering. Should we just do a walk through? Yeah. Let's do it. So this would have been um, where the matron actually lived and other staff. But there's known to be like a small child here, a boy of about eight years old, known as James. And I was told by one of the guides here that he loves shiny things, shiny lights. I don't know if this has been used here much at Aradale, but James, if you can hear my voice, I've got some really cool shiny lights for you tonight. Just along the floor here, you just need to go up to them, touch them, play with them, they're here for you. They can't hurt you, they won't hurt you. I know that you like, um, Balls. If you can light these up for me, I can leave the cat, uh, you a cat ball tonight. Did you hear that? A knock. So again, about three years ago, we were here investigating. We heard like a knock, sounded very much like a, a knock on the wall. Tripwire just went off also. Thank you. I don't know if that's James or someone else, but thank you for that. Can you knock for us? Or maybe make these lights light up again? As we continue to explore the matron's quarters, we received two different responses through Ghost Tube, again, which we did not hear in the moment. But both of these responses were related to sound, which is weird considering something strange had happened with the volume on our Ghost Tube app. There is actually another place of interest in the matron's quarters I really want to go to tonight as well. This place is so huge, and like all of the wings of this place are like this just never ending dark. It's it's actually pretty spooky, even if you don't believe in the paranormal, it's pretty spooky. I do really want to go back to this hallway. This hallway, Jared and I had an interesting experience here last time. We were literally told by our tour guide that he does not like to pass the threshold of this door because there's an entity um, down there or maybe multiple entities, I'm not sure, that can be on the nastier side and he has had like physical experiences down here. So I don't, I don't know if you remember us, I hope that you do. Last time we were here, we were using an Ovilus device and the first word it said was stab. 
a violent aggressive word right but it also came out with satan so not sure if that was like someone trying to intimidate or scare or what sometimes men get targeted a little bit more than the women do i just got chills when you said that like shivers like because it's the word stab but i mean i was more startled because of what the obelisk said you know what i mean like what was it because of the word we got or was it because of the story we already knew about you know like i always question that so if there's somebody down here can you do something to make your presence known to us now a little noise you can touch one of us oh god not another creepy bathroom is that a bathroom yeah <laughs> We always I was have just bathrooms looking on this there. channel. That is some really old toilet paper. Okay, Jared just walking in there and me standing with my back to this door felt uncomfortable. I don't know if it's just because you have your back to an empty room, but honestly, it felt a bit weird. We're not scared of you and you don't need to be scared of us either. Is that out here? Hello? What about if I leave Jared in here? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about me being in here? Who was making that noise before? I just got really cold here. Cold? Yeah, from the bathroom with the creepy toilet paper. This is one of the reasons I wanted to come back to Aradale, is the location that I'm taking you to. Something happened to me there that I've always like, it's just been etched in my brain since. So you guys know I have a, a thing with bathrooms. A lot of the paranormal activity that Jared and I experience, particularly me, is always centered on bathrooms. I don't know if it's the metal used in the pipes, bathtubs, or perhaps even water source, but I find a lot of paranormal things happen surrounding the bathrooms. And we just had ghost tips on the silent. We just had the word liar come up. Liar? Are you referring to me as a liar? I wonder if we've had any other words come through because it's been on silent this whole time. This is the moment that we realised Ghost Tube's volume had been muted, so we turned it up. I am noting this here, however, as something odd and similar to this would happen to us once again a little later in our investigation. Oh guys, I can't exactly remember. I have a feeling it was this stool, but last time Jared and I were here, we came into a bathroom. I said something along the lines like, is there somebody in here? Like checking if there's, you know, somebody in the, the cubicle. Jared lifted his camera to sort of look into the cubicle and I clear as day heard something come out of the cubicle. And then later when I was editing upon review, there's a clear voice there. And to me, it sounds like someone saying hello as if to signify, hey, there's someone in here, which is super weird. Hello patient, I'm just checking on you in there. Oh. What was that? What? I said, oh. Oh. What was that? I actually swear it was this one down here, but I could be wrong. Because I remember walking past this bathtub. Right, it, it actually could be. I thought it was the first one, but I might be wrong. I feel like it was this one. Is there somebody here with us? We don't mean to film you in the toilet. So this place is less investigated. They've actually only reopened this area up in recent years, uh, supposedly, but they have had some interesting activity in this area. There's any ladies around? My name is Amy and this is Jared and we've come to say hello. What's in here? Oh my God. Is there someone on the floor? No, I think it's like a pile of rags or something. I just, it looked like there was a body on the floor in there. Is there any women here that want to say hello? We're just here. I'm getting magnet spike right here. What the heck? Hello? You're in the middle of a room with nothing around you. There's no metal around me at all. Do you like Jared? Maybe that's the matron. I've heard that you like technology.
This reaction on the ghost tube's magnetometer was interesting and not something we'd seen it do before. In the moment, we couldn't establish why it would do this, so we were unsure if it was a natural interference. We had however been told that one of the matrons here loves technology, and we did wonder if this could be why we had such troubles with our gear at the beginning of our investigation. She just loves technology. Like, she's well before technology, but she loves technology. When we started using more complicated equipment here, we were getting comments like, this is incredible, this is amazing. And we were just getting more and more and more. She was just thrilled that she could actually use this equipment and impart so much more than just a beep here and a flash there. She, yeah, she, she loves things like flurs, she loves spirit box, she loves portals. Yeah, anything that gives her a bit more complexity, uh, she thinks it's the best. That is so weird, because yeah, we had, we, like we're filming this after, we had so yeah. many tech issues down there. Yeah. Cameras. Yeah. yeah. As we made our way back to our equipment to set up for our next experiment, our tripwire would trigger twice over in James's room. This indicated that a spike in EMF was detected in this area of the room. Additionally, as the light illuminated, Ghost Tube SLS would detect a figure near the wire. Since this occurred both times that the light illuminated, we cannot rule out for sure that it was a false positive mapping the wire and the change in the still environment. Because we felt as though the matron may have been messing with our equipment, we set up to perform an SD session, which we had heard the spirits of this area love. We decided to conduct this in a small hallway, where some darker activity has been reported. Reaching out with Jared blindfolded and listening to a spirit box through noise cancelling headphones while relaying anything he heard come through, while I asked questions which he was unable to hear. We are now in complete darkness besides the tripwire and Warden. Lantern. My name is Amy. And I'm here tonight with Jared. Let's talk then. Oh, thank you for... Am I talking to the, the matron? Lady. Okay, so you're the lady? Thank you so much for coming through. Again, my name is Amy. This man on the end here in the chair, his name is Jared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is him. Now, we visited here a few years ago. I don't know if you would remember us. Cross. Is that a, a religious thing or are you angry? I'm waving. You're waving? I'm gonna wave at you as well. I'm not sure where you are. Can we have a name? Is that okay? Five. Five, is that how many of you are here with us? Don't. What don't you want me to do? Five year old. There's a child here. It's not James, is it? I heard James is a little bit older than that. It's a girl. It's a girl, okay. Are you friends with James? Do you know James? I thought I just felt my arm twitch then. Are you nasty or are you nice? Are you gonna be... If you really wanted to. Okay, so you can be nasty or nice. Can you tell me why you're still here? Yep. Wait. Wait. Let go. Okay, I'm patient. Stay. Okay, I'll, I'll stay here. I did just hear some noises down here. Stay. We'll stay with you for a bit then. That's okay. It's coming back. If there is somebody here, can you walk down the hallway? I believe you. Is that in reference to someone calling me a liar just before? <laughs> Thank you for lighting that up. The tripwire lighting up was pretty cool to see here, especially since I had just invited whoever might be around to walk down the hallway. I just got mad chills all over me as well. It's you. Thank you for lighting these up. Are you able to walk a bit further, a bit closer to Jared? I feel like you're near me because I'm very cold right now. You've seen it. Oh my God, I just heard a loud noise out that way. The men. <gasps> The men, wearing a blue shirt. Someone wearing a blue shirt, is that who you're talking about? The way. The way? Or that way. Is there a doctor here? There you go. Okay, I've heard there is a doctor here, a male doctor, who kind of makes everybody else leave because he's a bit scary and intimidating. Even the matron leaves when he's- 20. Around. 20. 
Is that how many of you are here? Is James? Not yet. Not yet. I was going to ask if James is around. He is. Okay, James is here. Thank you. If James is here... Husband? You... Well, that's my husband sitting in the chair with the funny things on his ears and head. <laughs> Three. Three. It's a good spot. Good spot here or... Is that where we should go? What does the number three mean? I'm recovering. Oh, I'm glad to hear that you're recovering. It started. Started. In recovery. Started in recovery. Why, why did you come here? Can you tell me that? If you don't mind me asking, if you want to- Felt movement over here just now. Someone near Jared. It's okay if you touch him. If you are near him, maybe you can go up to this- um, It's a miracle. This lantern on the floor. Can you show yourself? Go inside. Go inside. Here. In. You want me to go in the cell? Step in. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm in the cell or the room, should goosebumps. I say. Goosebumps. I do, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps here. Now I've stepped in. It's been a while. Been a while since what? Since you had a visitor? Healthy. I'm healthy? Sure. Oh, okay. Thank you. Can you tell me why I, cr I started- It's on the paper. Oh, you're reporting about a patient. Can you tell Those me- Those indeed. You still doing the rounds here? Grab. Are you gonna grab me or Jared? I'm a bit scared now, to be honest. Him. All right, you're gonna grab him. Do it. You can grab him. With the night wearing on, Jared and I now made our way over to the men's infirmary, one of the darker areas of the old asylum. I don't know any staff here that actually like it in there. We go in there as ghost tour guides. We have a lot of history to impart in that space. And it's pretty easy to do that because you're in a big group. But on paranormal tours, it's a little bit different. A lot of horrible things have happened. We see a lot of really frightening things in there, apparition-wise, and it doesn't feel good. A lot of death. I mean, Aradale's seen somewhere in the vicinity of 10 and 13,000 deaths in the first place. A, a good number of those would have happened in those infirmaries during their operation. It's just, it's, it's a bad place. We didn't know this going into the hospital, but I was about to have a really rough time inside this building. Right from the get-go, things got pretty weird. Just after entering and setting up some still cameras, we planned to exit the building to begin our investigation from outside. Though, as we were leaving, Ghost Tube said a very disturbing word that could be relevant to the treatment endured within the hospital, or what was soon to happen to me in this space. There's a door up here we can walk in from outside. Oh, we can. Oh. I just got a word, harm. The volume wasn't up. That's, I turned up the volume because you asked me to. I did. I 100% turned the volume up and goes to warn you when you don't have volume up. That's the second time that's happened tonight. Look, hang on. <sighs> I swear it just went down as well. Like I turned it all the way up and then it went back down. Like, I don't know, that's weird. That has been playing up. Curiously, I noticed that the volume was once again turned off on the phone, despite us making sure it was on while setting up, which we even discussed on camera. That's recording. Okay. Um, do you want to get GT out or? Yeah, let's do Ghost Tubi. Let's make sure volume's on. We now made our way back outside to begin, when we received a name that we would later learn does hold relevance to someone currently linked to the asylum, who actually really dislikes the men's infirmary. Crypt Keepers, we're about to go into the men's infirmary. This is one of the- Daniel. Daniel. Okay, thank you, Daniel, if you're around. It's a male name. Yeah. Were you a patient or a doctor? You can stay with us tonight as we go through the infirmary, even though it's a bit scary in there. <laughs> So this is for sure one of the places where it gives people the creeps. So it's infirmary that's like a hospital, yeah? Yeah. Now they're not 100% sure lobotomies actually occurred here, but it <gasps> speculated that yeah, they did. I put an SLS and two REM pods in the hallway in a very specific area because I know a figure has been captured there. And I actually have an image of that figure to show you. So one of the guides here actually caught that when she was doing a bit of a solo challenge walking through. She snapped it on her cell phone, didn't even realize that she had 
caught that until reviewing it later. She was in there alone and at that time her phone completely drained of battery. It's so weird. Maybe that's like why ghost tube's been playing up already. We've been having so many like technical faults. The camera that wasn't working in the matron's quarter is now working. And I just had the REM pod go off in here too as you were talking. Let's go towards that. <laughs> Okay, so there's the two REM pods and our ghost tube SLS is set up. So this is the room where, you know, lobotomies were done. And these are the two cells that were, they would keep the patients. It is very much like jail cell, right? Oh my God, it's freezing in here. This was a room where it was performed, right? Where they believe it was performed. Yeah. Just be quiet for a sec. It's very cold in that room, no? What happened? God, that scared me. I don't know if you're a little bit uh, disoriented. I don't know who I could be talking to, but I know that a lot happened here at Aradale. I can't say for sure what happened, I'm sorry. Why am I freezing like someone is just blowing cold air on me? It's so weird because I actually feel comfortable temperature right now. Weird. So guys, the photo that I showed you outside was actually taken here near this door and we have heard the REM pod go off. To me it sort of looked like he was actually more just here like walking into this door but I actually don't remember the picture. But yeah, it was really creepy. Uh, that's probably the, the most... You just... Well, we were just saying it was really creepy. I'm sorry, we, we don't mean to disrespect you. We do come in respect and I apologize. Is it, can you tell me who was standing here in that photo? Can you tell me who was? Yeah. It said your name. My name? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You remember Jared or like, you want to talk to Jared? Um, should I just keep standing here then? Um, yes, that's my name. After receiving some interesting responses, we switched things up and ran ghost tube box to see if the spirits might have more to say. All right, is there anybody in this room that wants to communicate with us or wants to let, wants to let us know that they're here? Can you tell us your name maybe or something about you? Me. You turn down. That was really weird. Me. Yeah. Sorry, who's me? You know. You know. Is oh. it Daniel? It's is it is it Daniel? We've gotten the name Daniel before. Does that mean anything? Or maybe it's also Jared. That's Who? so weird. You know. Who said my name before? I have full body chills from that. How do you know my name? <laughs> that say you mentioned it maybe or something. You mentioned it. This is really creepy. This box I've... session. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you tell us about who's been seen in the, um, in the hallway just out there? He was. He was. That photo uh, that our, our guide earlier showed us, it definitely looked like a male to me too. Definitely. That was definitely a man, yeah. We would love to know a little bit about you. Were you perhaps a patient here or did you work here? Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Anything? No. No. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. This is a woman talking. It, the relevant voices sound like a woman to me and maybe they don't wanna, or she doesn't wanna to talk to me. And maybe that's why Jared came through. Cause literally we swapped up so I could give my arm a break with the, the heavy camera. And then it's like, no. Should, so, we, should we swap back? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we respect that. Can I just say my hand's shaking. I'm not sure if it's cause of the weird results we're getting, or maybe my arms just sore for holding the camera, but I feel like I'm twitching. I, 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 how do you feel about us being here? Jared, I'm feeling very uncomfortable, like directly behind me, doesn't feel right. Oh, really yeah. Do you wanna swap? Like, all the fucking, um, Hairs on the back of my neck are standing up like, 
Should we get the camera out and take some photos? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Just right here behind me. It just feels weird. I just got chills standing here. Is there someone here with us now? <gasps> I heard there is, and I heard a noise out here. A bang or something. It's so cold here. Who's here with us? If you are out here, just set, go towards one of these red lights. Here, I was feeling as though someone was standing right behind me, like that particular sensation where someone is within your personal space. I find it interesting that we would hear a noise right after I report this, though what was about to happen next really added the chill factor for me. In this moment, I would feel someone touch my elbow, followed by the sensation of someone stabbing a pin into my back three separate times. Did you just touch me? I'm not my really. elbow? <gasps> no. Something just... Oh... Someone is stabbing me in the back. <laughs> I didn't touch you. Is someone touching her? Like, what, what can you tell us what's going on? More than six. More than six. Okay, I'm going to come in here and just hold this and talk to me, please. Three times I felt something in my back like a pin. I shit you not. Boom, 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 like back here. Six people touching me? Alright, I've only felt three pricks. Although I'm... It's a lady again. Throat. Throat? I heard throat. Were you in here for your throat or are you referring to one of our throats? Is that the treatment? I was hot. What the fuck was that? I had like a weird medical equipment or something. It was a <laughs> There was a beep, yeah. Yeah, my back doesn't feel good. Is someone messing with me in here? A little. A little. A little. A little. <laughs> this is insane. This is like on yeah. point. Do you like me or no? What do you think of me? How do you feel about me? Had a really rough night. Aww. Is there a doctor in the house? We are. We are. We are. It's fine, son. Will, will you show yourself to us if we get the camera out and start taking some photographs? A pyre. A pyre. A pyre. Despite still feeling discomfort, we checked my back, but we could not see any visible marks other than some redness, so this could have been because I was rubbing my own skin. Still, I wanted to continue our investigation, so we decided to perform some flash photography to see if we could pick up on any anomalies. All right, time to take some photos. If there's someone around that can show themselves to me, I'd love to see you. Especially in the hallway. We continued to take photographs for some time in the men's infirmary, yet did not document anything of interest. So we decided to move on to our next location and perhaps the most haunted place within the Aradale Lunatic Asylum, the men's wing, where the most dangerous patients of the asylum were typically housed. The only place that still intimidates me. I love it, but it intimidates me. It's the only place I've actually run, but at the end of the night, I had had a hectic night. It was quite terrifying on tour. Me and my colleague, we went to lock up. We got halfway through that particular room at the back of the men's ward there to lock that door and it erupted and it literally sounded like we had 10 or 15 trespassers at the back of that ward smashing things to bits and it felt aggressive and it felt threatening. I just heard and I looked and she's gone. She's already bailed on me. So I'm like, I can't. So I ran as well. And so I got out of that room, through the bathroom to the next door we could lock. And I've got the keys and she, my colleague's screaming at me, just lock the door. And I'm shaking and I'm trying to lock the door. And I got it locked. And I turned to her and I'm like, 
what's that going to do? And she's like, absolutely nothing, but I feel better. If you have a really bad night in there, it really feels like a force to be reckoned with. It feels like if those entities, spirits were there in the room with you and they had the power and the flesh and blood to hurt you, they wouldn't just hurt you, they'd probably kill you. They're dangerous, like there's some dangerous people down there. Beginning our walkthrough of the men's ward, which is the place that kind of scares me the most, and a place where I had a very vivid experience last time I was at Aradale. This is the place that I've been wanting to investigate all night. And I'll tell you what, since we started this investigation, my energy levels have just been sucked. I'm drained. I feel like I've just been just, I've got nothing left. And I feel like I'm open and vulnerable. And now I've come to the worst part of the asylum for me. So that's great. And look where we're starting. This cell has always stuck with me because of these scratch marks in the door, which are horrendous. And it just shows the desperation of people here and the want and the need for freedom. And it's, it's honestly sad, this is. Uh, yeah, this is original. I remember this from last time we were here and I really, when we had the tour, like it's not all the tours that we go on, it's not just about the paranormal, sometimes it's about the history too. And you just see stuff like this and it's really, um, Overwhelming. Honestly, these are cut in Weak. so deep. I'm sorry, is that how you're feeling? Or maybe you're referring to us. I did just say I'm like vulnerable. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's how you're feeling. You must have felt powerless here. I am going to walk towards the area where I had that experience last time. That is the place that I've been wanting to hit the most all night and just return to. And there's a few very disturbing things to see along the way too. I thought I just heard something like, which is funny because last time I was here, I heard so many things like voices. I haven't heard anything really tonight other than like taps or bangs. It's very cold here and drafty. Did you feel that draft? Yeah, the stairwell, I reckon. It was just coming up that stairwell. Okay. This room gets to me a little bit. This is where electroconvulsive therapy was conducted here at the Aradale Asylum. It's an eerie room. I don't know if it's the echo. I don't know if it's, you know, the torn up lino on the floor because of the beds shaking around from what they were doing in here. So this hallway, we actually have left monitored by a night vision camera. So if there's anyone down here in these maximum security holding rooms, can you make some noises for us? We will hear you. Can anyone come up to this device in my hands? Maybe you can talk to us. Can I just say, this place is like a maze. And they said that it was built like a labyrinth to keep people in if they escaped their room, like so they couldn't find their way out. And it literally is like that. It was also, yeah, purposely built like this to disorient. And... I heard some thuds then, down there. This way? It definitely has disoriented Jared and I. And... 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 And this is the place. This is where it happened. So essentially, last time we were here three years ago, I came on two consecutive nights to the asylum. The first night was just a, a public tour. And during that public tour, we were brought to this area. I was standing at the back of the group and I heard a man whisper in my ear, like really close, hey. And I turned around, assuming maybe it's Jared. He wasn't even standing near me. I was, there was no one around me. And I'm like, it's just, he didn't whisper to me. The next night when we came back to investigate, we came to this area and we were drawn to the door that is actually open down there. But that door isn't normally open, right? People aren't supposed to be going down through there on the tour. Jared and I came down here, that door was open. And we're like, what the heck? That's not supposed to be open. And as we were walking towards the door to suss it out, I thought that I heard a man's voice once again. I said to Jared, did you just hear a man cry out? He said, no. He he didn't hear it at all but the audio on our camera heard it and I'll, I'll play that moment for you guys now a replay but to me it really sounds like the voice says pull back which I've always thought was a warning for me. 
maybe the doorway. Did you hear that? No, but that door's open. I just heard a man's voice yell behind me. So this is called the forbidden door. So we actually have an SLS camera and our new tools, the lantern and the tripwire set up in front of it. So I don't know if we've caught anything. By the way, strangely enough, so last time we found the door open, even though we were told no one's supposed to go in there and it's supposed to be closed. Again tonight, it's now open. Maybe someone during the night opened it because there was a tour that came through here earlier. But I just find that odd because that's what happened last time. And I, like last time, I'm going to go close it. So this is what is beyond the forbidden door. I've been waiting all these years to see this. <laughs> so I said I was going to close it. Done. Having now made it to the area where I had an experience during our last visit, we set up to reach out, hoping to catch an EVP just as we had years ago. EVP session. EVP session. You ready? Roll. Hi, my name is Amy and I came here many years ago and I heard a man speak to me twice in this room. If you're here, can you uh, come forward and say something again to me? I would love to hear your voice once again. Can you tell us what you said to Amy last time she was here? Can you repeat? I just whispered a hold to that because, uh, sorry, there was a noise down here. I heard movement. Can you tell us how many people are here with us? I'm hearing stuff down there. It's coming from the door. I've got goosebumps and I feel a bit uncomfortable here. Can we hear your voice? Just say something very loud to us. Can you tell us your name? We now reviewed our EVP recording, and besides the tripwire triggering just once, we did not pick up on anything else of interest until we began to hear noises around us once again. I'm hearing stuff down here. Hello? Who's there? That whole session I was hearing the movement down there. But it also came up around here behind us. heard that surely yes that was like a door in the distance or something something down there for sure trip wire went off later in that it, there's no floorboards here but it sounds like floorboards creaking there's something, something creaking for sure now i'm getting all the goosebumps the noises are coming from the forbidden door i swear to god or well, at least some of them are. There was still one more experiment we wanted to try before our time at Aradel Lunatic Asylum came to an end. A world first and a totally new way of engaging with the spirit world. The results proved amazing but disturbing at the same time and I cannot wait to share them with you. But to see them, you'll need to make sure you are subscribed to my channel and have all notifications turned on as we'll be presenting them in the next episode along with the launch of our newest tool and investigation method. Something you've never seen used anywhere else before. For the longest time we have been working on what we've codenamed project s and we are truly excited to release this new tool and see the impact it will have on the paranormal community
Crib Keepers. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And remember, my friends from Adelaide's Haunted Horizons and Paranormal Quest also have episodes here. So make sure you check out their channels below. I'm going to put a link to them. I'm not sure when these videos are coming out, but definitely check them out regardless because they were worth a follow. Subscribe. I just also want to apologize. I feel like this was a very rocky investigation for me. I don't normally get emotional like that and right off of the get-go as soon as we pretty much got here yeah i apologize if it was like weird to watch it was weird for me trust me <laughs> uh, but i do hope that you enjoyed the investigation as a whole if you did please remember to like comment share and subscribe that really helps jared and i out if you want to read more about aradale lunatic asylum then i'm going to put a link below to my blog we also post bonus content on my patreon and my youtube members are linked below but thank you guys so much for watching until next time